Well, for those of you who have been following Winnie the Pooh, we're in chapter 8 today, in which Christopher Robin leads an exposition, exportation, to the North Pole. I trust that uh, you all have your winter jackets on since it looks like we're going to the North Pole today. One fine day, Pooh had stumped up to the top of the forest to see if his friend Christopher Robin was interested in bears at all. At breakfast that morning, a simple meal of marmalade spread lightly over a honeycomb or two. He had suddenly thought of a new song. It began like this, Sing ho for the life of a bear. Then he thought, when he had got as far as this, he stretched his head and thought to himself, that's a very good start for a song, but what about the second line? He tried to sing ho two or three times, but it didn't seem to help. Perhaps it would be better, he thought, if I sang hi for the life of a bear. So he sang it, but it wasn't. Very well then, he said, I shall sing that first line twice, and perhaps if I sing it very quickly, I shall find myself singing the third and fourth lines before I have time to think of them. And that would be a good song. Now then, sing ho for the life of a bear, sing ho for the life of a bear. I don't much mind if it rains or snows, cause I've got a lot of honey on my nice new nose. I don't care how it's, whether it snows or thaws, cause I've got a lot of honey on my nice clean paws. Sing ho for a bear, sing ho for a bear, and I'll have a little something in an hour or two. He was so pleased with this song that he sang it all the way to the top of the forest. And if I go on singing it much longer, he thought, it will become time for the little something and then the last line won't be true. So he turned it into a hum instead. Christopher Robin was sitting outside his door, putting on his big boots. As soon as he saw the big boots, Pooh knew that an adventure was going to happen and he brushed the honey off his nose with a little, the back of his paw and spruced himself up as well as he could so as to look ready for anything. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he called out. Hello, Pooh Bear. I can't get this boot on. That's bad, said Pooh. Do you think you could be very kindly lean against me? Because I keep pulling so hard that I fall over backwards. Pooh sat down, dug his feet into the ground, and pushed hard against Christopher Robin's back. And Christopher Robin pushed hard against his and pulled and pulled at his boot until he had got it on. And that's that, said Pooh. What do we do next? We're going on an expedition, said Christopher Robin, as he got up and brushed himself. Thank you, Pooh. Going on an expedition, an expedition, said Pooh eagerly. I don't think I've ever been on one of those. Where are we going on this expedition? Expedition, silly old bear. It's got an X in it. Oh, said Pooh. I know, but he really didn't. We're going to discover the North Pole. Oh, said Pooh again. What is the North Pole? He asked. It's just a thing you discover, said Christopher Robin carelessly, not being quite sure of himself. Oh, I see, said Pooh. Are bears any good at discovering it? Of course they are. And Rabbit and Kanga and all of you, it's an expedition. That's what an expedition means, a long line of everybody. You'd better tell the others to get ready while I see if my gun's all right. And we must bring provisions. Bring what? Things to eat. Oh, said Pooh happily. I thought you said provisions. I'll go and tell them. And he stumped off. The first person he met was Rabbit. Well, here's a picture of <clears throat> Pooh helping Christopher with his boots. 
And here's a picture of Pooh telling Rabbit of the expedition. Hello, Rabbit. Is that you? Let's pretend it isn't, said Rabbit. Let's pretend it isn't, said Rabbit, and see what happens. I've got a message for you. I'll give it to him. We're all going on an exp expedition with Christopher Robin. What is it when you're what is it when you're going on it? A sort of boat, I think, said Pooh. Oh, that sort. Yes, and, and we're going to discover the a pole or something. Or was it a mole? Anyhow, we're going to discover it. We are, we are, said the rabbit. Yes, and, and we've got to bring poo things to eat with us in case we want to eat them. Now I'm going down to Piglet's. Tell Kanga, will you? He left Robin and Rabbit and hurried off, hurried down to Piglet's house. The piglet was sitting on the ground at the door of his house, blowing happily at a dandelion. <clears throat> and wondering whether it would be this year, and next year, or sometime or never. He had just discovered that he would it would be never, and was trying to remember that what it was, and hoping it wasn't anything nice when Pooh came up. Oh, Piglet, said Pooh excitedly, we're going on an expedition, all of us are with things to eat, to discover something. To discover what? said Piglet anxiously. Oh, just something. Nothing fierce. Christopher Robin didn't say anything about fierce. He just said it had an X. It isn't about their necks, I mind, said Piglet earnestly. It's their teeth. But if Christopher Robin is coming, I don't mind anything. In a little while, they were already at the top of the forest, and the expedition started. First came Christopher Robin and Rabbit, then Piglet and Pooh, then Kanga with Roo in her pocket, an owl, then Eeyore, and at the end, in a long line, all Rabbit's friends and relations. I didn't ask him, Rabbit explained carelessly. They just came. They always do. They can march at the end after Eeyore. What I say, said Eeyore, is that it? Is that it's unsettling? I don't want to come up on this expo. expo. What? But Pooh said, I only came to oblige. But here I am. And if I'm at the end of the expo, what what are we talking about? Then let me be the end. But if every time I want to sit down for a little rest, I have to brush away half a dozen of Rabbit's smaller friends and relations first, then it isn't an expo, whatever it is. At all, it's simply a confused noise. That's what I say. I see what Eeyore means, said Owl. If you ask me, I'm not asking anybody, said Eeyore. I'm just telling everybody. We can look for the North Pole or we can play. Here we go gathering nuts and may with the end part of an ant's nest. It's all the same to me. And there was a shout from the top of the line. Come on, called Pris Christopher Robin. Come on, cried Pooh and Piglet. Come on, said Owl. We're starting, said Rabbit. I must go, and he hurried off to the front of the expedition with Christopher Robin. All right, said Eeyore. We're going, only don't blame me. So off they all went to discover the pole, and as they walked, they chatted to each other of this and that, all except Pooh, who was making up a song. This is the very this is the first verse he said to Piglet when he was ready with it. First verse of what? My song. What song? This one. Which one? Oh well, if
If you listen, Piglet, you'll hear it. How do you know I'm not listening? So here, everybody is gathered together for the expedition. The rabbits and Eeyore and and then here is Christopher Robin and Rabbit, Pooh Bear and Piglet, Owl and Eeyore. <coughs> Pooh couldn't answer that one, so he began to sing. When all went off to discover the pole, Owl and Piglet and Rabbit and all, it's a thing you discover, as I've been told, by Owl and Piglet and Rabbit on all, Eeyore, Christopher, Robin and Pooh, and Rabbit's relations all went to, and where the pole was none of them knew, sing hey for Owl and Rabbit and all. Hush, said Christopher Robin, turning around to Pooh. We're just coming to the danger to a dangerous place. Hush, said Pooh, turning around quickly to Piglet. Hush, said Piglet to Kanga. Hush, said Kanga to Owl, while Roo said, Hush, several times to himself very quietly. Hush, said Owl to Eeyore. Hush, said Eeyore in a terrible voice to all Rabbit's friends and relations, and hush, they said nastily to each other all down the line until it got to the last one of all. And the last and the smallest friend and relation was so upset to find that the whole expedition was saying hush to him, to him that he buried himself head downwards in a crack in the ground and stayed there for two days until the danger was over. Here's Christopher Robin telling everybody to hush. And there's the rabbit burying his head. Well, as he said, uh, he stayed there for two days until the danger was over and went home and then went home in a very great hurry and lived quietly with his aunt ever afterwards. His name was Alexander Beetle. They had come to a stream which twisted and tumbled between high rocky banks and Christopher Robin saw at once how dangerous it was. It's just the place, he explained, for an ambush. What sort of bush? whispered Pooh to Piglet. A gorse bush? My dear Pooh, said Owl, in his superior way. Don't you know what an ambush is? Owl, said Piglet, looking round at him severely. Pooh's whisper was a perfectly private whisper, and there was no need an ambush, said Owl, is a sort of surprise. So is a gorse bush sometimes, said Pooh. An ambush is, as I was about to explain to Pooh, said Piglet, is sort of a surprise. If people jumped out at you suddenly, that's an ambush, said Owl. It's an ambush, Pooh, when people jump at you suddenly, exclaimed Piglet. Pooh now knew what an ambush was and said that a gorse bush had sprung at him suddenly one day when he fell off a tree, and he had taken six days to get all the prickles out of himself. We are not talking about gorse bushes, said Owen a little crossly. I am, said Pooh. They were climbing very cautiously up the stream now, going from rock to rock. And after they'd gone a little way, they came to a place where the banks widened out at each side, so that on each side of the water there was a level strip of grass on which they could now sit and rest. As soon as he saw this, Christopher Robin called, Halt! 
and they all sat down and rested. I think, said Christopher Robin, that we ought to eat all our provisions now so that we shan't have so much to carry. Eat all our what? said Pooh. All that we brought, said Piglet, getting to work. That's a good idea, said Pooh, and he got to work too. Have you all got something, said Christopher Robin with his mouth full. All except me, said Eeyore, as usual. He looked round at them in his melancholy way. I suppose none of you are sitting on a thistle by any chance. I believe I am, said Pooh. Ow! He got up and looked behind him and, yes, I was. I thought so. Thank you, Pooh. If you're quite finished with it, he moved across to Pooh's place and began to eat. If you don't do them any good, you know, sitting on you, it don't do them any good, you know, sitting on them, he went on as he looked up munching. Takes all the life out of them. Remember that another time, all of you, a little consideration, a little thought for others makes all the difference. As soon as he had finished his lunch, Christopher Robin whis whispered to Rabbit and Rabbit said, Yes, yes, of course. And they walked a little way up the stream together. I didn't want the others to hear, said Christopher Robin. Quite so, said the Rabbit, looking important. It's, I wonder, it's only... Rabbit, I suppose you don't know. What does the North Pole look like? Well, said Rabbit, stroking his whiskers. Now you're asking me. I did know once, only I've sort of forgotten, said Christopher Robin carelessly. It's a funny thing, said Rabbit, but i sort of forgotten too, although I did know once. I suppose it's just a pole stuck in the ground. Sure to be a pole, said Rabbit, because of calling a pole, and it's yeah, and if it's a pole, well, I would think you would be sticking in the ground, shouldn't you? Because there'd be nowhere else to stick it. Yes, that's what I thought. The only thing, said Rabbit, is where is it sticking? That's what we're looking for, said Christopher Robin. They went back to the others. Piglet was lying on his back, sleeping peacefully. Rue was washing his face and paws in the stream, while Kanga explained to everyone proudly that this was the first time he had ever washed his face himself. And Al was telling Kanga an interesting anecdote <clears throat> full of long words like encyclopedia and rhododendron to which Kanga wasn't listening. I don't hold with all this washing, grumbled Eeyore. This modern behind-the-ears nonsense, what do you think, Pooh? Well, said Pooh, I think. But we shall never know what Pooh thought, for there came a sudden squeak from Roo, a splash and a loud cry of alarm from Kanga. I think that Roo has fallen in the creek. So much for washing, said Eeyore. Roo's fallen in, cried Rabbit, and he and Christopher Robin came running down to the rescue. Look at me swimming, squeaked Roo from the middle of the pool, and was hurried down a waterfall into the next pool. Are you all right, Roo dear? called Kang anxiously. Yes, said Roo. Look at me and down he went over the next waterfall into another pool. Everybody was doing something to help. Piglet, wide awake suddenly, was jumping up and down and making, Ooh, ee, I say noises. Owl was explaining that in case of sudden and temporary immersion, the important thing was to keep the head above water. Kanga was jumping along the bank saying, Are you sure you're all right, Roo, dear? to which Rue, from whatever pool he was in at the moment, was answering, Look at me swimming! Eeyore had turned around and hung his tail over the first pool into which Rue fell. 
and with his back to the accident was grumbling quietly to himself and saying, Oh, this washing, but catch on to my tail, little Roo, and you'll be all right. And Christopher Robin and Rabbit came hur hurrying past every Eeyore and were calling out to the others in front of them. All right, Roo, I'm coming, called Christopher Robin. Get something across the stream. Lower down, some of you fellows, cried Rabbit. But Pooh was getting something. Two pools below Roo, he was standing with a long pole in, in, his, in his paws. And Kanga came up and took one end of it. And between them, they held it across the lower part of the pool. And Roo, still bubbling proudly, Look at me swimming! drifted up against it and climbed out. Did you see me swimming? squeaked Roo excitedly while Kanga scolded him and rubbed him down. Pooh, did you see me swimming? That's called swimming. That was what I was doing. Rabbit, did you see what I was doing? Swimming. Hello, Piglet. I say Piglet. What do you think I was doing? Swimming. Christopher Robin, did you see me? But Christopher Robin wasn't listening. He was looking at Pooh. Pooh? Where did you find that? Pooh, he said, where did you find that pole? Pooh looked at the pole in his hands. I just found it. I thought it ought to be useful. I just picked it up. Pooh, said Christopher Robin solemnly, the expedition is over. You have found the North Pole. Oh, said Pooh. Eeyore was sitting with his tail in the water when they all got back to him. Tell Roo to be quick, somebody, he said. My tail's getting cold. I don't want to mention it, but just mention it. I, I don't want to complain, but there it is. My tail's cold. Here I am, speak, squeaked Roo. Oh, there you are. Did you see me swimming? Eeyore took his tail out of the water and swished it from side to side. As I expected, he said, lost all feeling, numbed it. That's what it's done, numbed it. Well, as long as nobody minds, I suppose it's all right. Poor Eeyore, how dry it out for you, said Christopher Robin, and he took out his handkerchief and rubbed it. Thank you, Christopher Robin. You're the only one who seems to understand about tails. They don't think that's what's the matter with some of these others. They've no imagination. A tail isn't a tail to them. It's just a little bit extra at the back. There's a picture of Eeyore. <clears throat> pulling his tail out of the water. Never mind, Eeyore, said Christopher Robin, rubbing his hardest. Is that better? It's feeling more like a tail, perhaps. It belongs again, if you know what I mean. Hello, Eeyore, said Pooh, coming up to them with his pole. Hello, hello, Pooh. Thank you for asking, but I shall be able to use it again in a day or two. Use what? said Pooh. What we're, ta what we're talking about. <laughs> I wasn't talking about anything, said Pooh, looking puzzled. My mistake again. I thought you were saying how sorry you were about my tail being all numb. And could you do something, anything to help? No, said Pooh, that wasn't me. He thought for a little and then suggested helpfully, perhaps it was someone else. Well, thank him for me when you see him. Pooh looked anxiously at Christopher Robin. Pooh's found the North Pole, said Christopher Robin. Isn't that lovely? Pooh looked modestly down. Is, is it that, said Eeyore? Yes, said Christopher Robin. Is that what we were looking for? 
Yes, yes, said Pooh. Oh, said Eeyore. Well, anyhow, it didn't rain, he said. They stuck the pole in the ground and Christopher Robin tied a message on it. North Pole, discovered by Pooh. Pooh found it. Then they all went home again. And I think, but I'm not quite sure, that Roo had a hot bath and went straight to bed. But Pooh went back to his own house and feeling very proud of what he had done, had a little something to revive himself. And that's the story of the expedition, expedition to the North Pole. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.